One of the most critical decisions when designing stable and safe electrical systems is system grounding. In this video, we will provide you an overview of how to properly size a neutral grounding resistor, or NGR. The key parameter that determines the NGR's effect on the circuit is the let-through current. This video will focus on how to determine what level of let-through current to specify when designing a resistance-grounded system. We determine this in four steps. Step 1. Let's look at the system charging current. But first, let's define charging current. An electrical system will have capacitance to ground, which is contributed to by cable length, surge arresters, motors, and other equipment. This capacitance is distributed through the system and is what references an ungrounded transformer or generator to ground. When a ground fault occurs on this ungrounded system, the voltage on the remaining phases rises and the fault current flowing through the ground fault is the charging current. When we consider a ground fault on a system with multiple feeders, a ground fault relay on an unfaulted feeder will read that feeder's charging current and a ground fault relay on the faulted feeder will read the sum of all of the charging currents from the unfaulted feeders. Depending on their relative size, there may be little difference in charging current between each feeder or load. Now that we know what charging current is, there are three methods on how to determine it. The first method is measurement. On an existing system, an ammeter can be used to measure the charging current of the system. During this test, create a phase-to-ground fault on an ungrounded three-phase system and measure the charging current flow. Method two is calculation. This is a common method used by engineers when designing a new system, but it requires an understanding of the entire circuit. If the circuit is modified by adding or subtracting power system components, the charging current should be recalculated for accuracy purposes. And the third method is estimation. Estimation is based on KVA rating, or load rating. This method is less precise, but provides a margin for additional circuit growth. Step two in determining the let-through current is to select an operating value or set point for the ground fault protection that exceeds the system charging current. If the operating value of a ground fault relay is less than the charging current of the feeder it is protecting, it will cause a nuisance trip. In a properly coordinated system, only the faulted feeder relay will pick up or detect the ground fault. In step three, take that operating value and multiply it by the acceptable tripping ratio. Tripping ratio is the ratio of perspective ground fault current, defined by the NGR, to the operating value of the ground fault protection. The tripping ratio is also determined by the application. In mining applications, where portable equipment endures harsh environments, a tripping ratio of 5 is common. In an industrial application, where the protection may be alarming, a tripping ratio of 2 could be used. An adequate tripping ratio ensures that sufficient ground fault current is available for detection when a ground fault occurs. When a ground fault occurs internal to a motor, the added impedance of the motor winding will also limit the amount of ground fault current that can flow. Because of this, a higher tripping ratio is necessary to detect high impedance faults and provide machine winding ground fault protection. In the example shown, the system with a tripping ratio of 5 will protect the equipment and the system with a tripping ratio of 2 will not. Step 4. Once we have our value, we use the next largest standard let-through current rating available. Now that we've covered the steps, let's walk through a real-world example. You have a mining electrical system fed by a 500 kVA 4160 volt transformer. What size NGR should be used in this system? Estimation method. One ampere per 1000 kVA on a medium voltage transformer means we can expect a 0.5 ampere charging current. Select 0.75 ampere ground fault pickup level to prevent sympathetic tripping on 0.5 ampere charging current. Since this is in a mine, we use a tripping ratio of 5. 
0.75 ampere times 5 equals 3.75 amperes. 3.75 amperes is not a standard NGR size. Round up to the next standard size and use a 4160 volt 5 ampere neutral grounding resistor. The entire electrical system is depending on a properly sized NGR to ground it. NGR failure results in an ungrounded system. Fortunately, there's another engineering control through continuous NGR monitoring. The NGR monitor measures voltage, current, and resistance to verify the NGR continuity and to detect ground faults with or without a healthy NGR. For more information, go to littlefuse.com forward slash NGR.